Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Today I want to share with you a recent trip I took to New York City where I took a lot of my camera gear but really was excited about using my Fuji X100S. Just so that you know, over here on my blog you can actually go find out what I think about this beautiful camera and uh, right down here it's pretty nice. And I just talk about some of the capabilities that the camera has which makes it a really exciting tool not only for a photographer, but for a mom, a dad, or someone that just wants to take beautiful camera pictures and uh, head around <laughs> around town or wherever else you go. So let's dive right in. We're going to start with this picture of the Playwright Tavern. And I found this just to be extraordinarily interesting. When I was walking around, you have to understand, uh, it was a couple of kids, my, my youngest son, my oldest son, and my sweetheart and I were walking around on New Year's Day. And so there were people everywhere and we we ended up turning down this side street uh, to come across the playwright tavern and i was just immediately amazed by all of these colors that i saw so of course as we were walking past i stopped real quickly um, my my littlest son ira's hand in my left hand and i snapped this photo i just composed real quick and and shot and so i was able to walk and interact with my family and try to keep them safe from bumping around because there's, there's just so many people going on and you'll see that in a later photo but I was able to also at the time shoot unencumbered you see I was able to keep the X100S tethered to my right hand so that I could you know frame and shoot through the optical viewfinder and then I was also able to uh, you know hold on to my youngest son's hand and walk around which was excellent you know if I had had my X-T1 with my lenses on it and a flash or something like that or if I had been carrying you know, a Sony, uh, like the A77 Mark II or something, or even a, a Canon uh, a 5D Mark III or something like that. That's a much larger system, you have to understand. And so the Fuji X100S is an excellent camera that allowed me to be mobile as well as take these amazing images. As we can sit, continue, I see that I was, I was over there in Times Square and I looked up and I saw Kinky Boots. One of my friends saw Kinky Boots and I thought I have to snag this picture for him. So I did. Once again, an excellent shot, just able to pick the camera up, take the photo. I'm composing everything through the optical uh, viewfinder. I'm not using the EVF. Um, my uh, focal point is center, so I'm using focus and recompose. And I've got my settings set for everything I want. I'm staying around 400 and 2.8 and around 1 60th, 1 80th. I'm managing my shutter speed just with that top dial. And I've already got my uh, aperture set. So the only other things I'll adjust is as it gets darker, I'll go ahead and adjust uh, my ISO up. Situations like this where it's dark and these, uh, these neon lights are really able to shine brightly, you get these beautiful images, very, very little to zero noise, and they kind of glow, and that is absolutely outstanding. Coming here, this is definitely some production work that I've done afterwards in Lightroom. And if you'll notice, all of these, I'm shooting just in JPEG. I wanted to go out and shoot and have fun. I didn't want to worry about trying to manage and maintain a flat profile of a raw picture so that I could do a lot of stuff to it later. So what I did was I set the camera up with my sharpness and my color saturation. I set it up in a, a Velvia mode. I set it up with noise reduction. I did all those things in camera so that it would produce an image in camera as a JPEG that I wanted. Now, if this had been a wedding or something, of course, I would have been shooting raw. Had this been a corporate assignment, of course, I would have been shooting raw as well. I always shoot raw plus JPEG because I find that Fuji JPEGs have a natural quality to them. And this, this is what they're talking about when they say that. Remember, I was able to do all of this color manipulation that you see here, a single color monochrome right here. Uh, I was able to do all of this with this JPEG file, only a six and a quarter megabyte JPEG file. Uh, guys, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and to not have a whole bunch of noise introduced into the image and be able to push uh, the color saturation up high so I get this really, really dominant and drastic sky with the moon, the crescent moon in the background there. That's exciting, but still able to pull out all of the color and have a single color monochrome right here. It's just a lot of fun. You'll notice here I am going, I'm jumping up to ISO 2000. For all of my recipe guys out there, you know, uh, it's not really about what I shoot. It doesn't really particularly matter how I got here. You could go and try to duplicate this and you may not get the same result that I do, even though you're using the same settings. And that has everything to do with 
the lighting in the sky and everything else. So I don't really worry about the settings so much, only as a reference point. The most important thing that I try to manage is my shutter speed, and then I use the ISO to give my exposure where I want it to be. So really, I'm riding my shutter speed, and I'm, I'm, I've got my shutter speed and aperture set and the rest of these, and I'm just riding my ISO to make sure that it, it is what it needs to be. Wow, you know, Prince, David Bowie, two amazing artists, gone. 2016 was a hard year for, for pop culture icons. And here we are standing beside Carlos Bakery and we see Prince and we see David Bowie and they're, they're, they're facing off together. They're looking at one another. It's like, like this memorial, this high five. And then we've got these buildings in the background, this yellow. And so it was just such a dramatic picture to me. It also gave me the ability to show quite a bit of symmetry. So I've got the symmetry, but the chaos taking place down here as well. And it just makes for a very exciting photo. Add to it this uh, dual color monochrome that I've put together here with these deep, intense blues, but these beautiful yellow colors and this punchy kind of blacks that we've got. And you've just got a really interesting image. There's even a little bit of motion blur going on with the cars in the front. And I, I, really, I really enjoy that. Uh, once again, we're going to come over here and just show how exciting New York City really is. Man, this place is exciting. And you'll see in the next photo, I think I prefer this one to the next one, but you'll see here we're showing the, the width of a street in New York City. We've got a little bus right here, uh, like a double-decker bus. We, people are just elbow to elbow, you know, and I'm walking through this. My my family and I are enjoying We're we're going to go to and eat some pizza. We're going to go down to Central Park. We're going to go do all kinds of things. We're walking around down in Times Square. We're going to hit B&H Photo and Adorama. Why not? We're going to go to all these cool places, the Empire State Building even. And here we are uh, with this image. It's, it's just so encompassing. It's exciting. What makes it more exciting is that I'm able to take this photo and take a nice high-quality image with my son in my hand. So I'm not being hampered by the camera. The camera's working for me. And that's what people fail to realize about, uh, you know, these smaller cameras, these rangefinder style digital cameras that Fuji is putting out. The ability to shoot, move, and communicate happens very easy. You know, I've got all my toggles on the front. You know, I'm, I've got my ISO and everything set, and I'm able to compose through the optical viewfinder and get these beautiful images. And once again, the majority of the processing is here was done inside of the camera. I set the camera up in JPEG in order to process the type of image that I want. And here's what we got. Of course, I did a little bit of perspective correction in Photoshop, and I did just a little bit of, uh, of color correction in Photoshop, but uh, the majority of this is what you see is what you're gonna get out of the camera, which is excellent. Here's another one of those photos. This is one of the most my most favorite photos. Uh, out of my friends, just because it shows how tall and expansive New York City is. Just exciting. Continuing, I start shooting some monochrome here, and wow, you know, Madison Square Gardens, New York City, the Empire State Building right here in the back, and I'm really trying to just use the light in its complete values. Uh, so there's not really much, by the way, of mid-tones. Of course, there are some mid-tones, right? But I'm really working off the highlights and the shadows. And to create this really contrasty, punchy images, they have lots of stripes. I'm going for lines, lines up and down, lines up and down, just like the buildings. And then this endless sea of people walking through the lines. It's just really cool. But I begin to play with color a little bit more. When I took this photo, I realized that uh, although I liked it and I enjoy the Empire State Building, the Madison Square Garden lights right here that are lighting it up are actually reflecting off of this building right here. And that caused something really amazing to happen. It caused this. So I've got all of these lights, these vertical lines going on. Like I told you, I was really interested in the vertical lines. And I've got these cars moving in the background right here as well. And it just shows you... Uh, like what, just how big this place really is. And it just feels like these these lines from these skyscrapers go on up into infinity. You know, they just keep going. And then this, I did here a dual color monochrome right here. So I've got the red, white, and the blue, the flag right here. That just pops and it pulls me into the red, white, and the blue of the Empire State Building. And then the red, white, and blue up and down the street right here across to Pennsylvania, um, Madison Square Garden. Just absolutely exciting. And I like this because these are the types of things that you can create when you don't even realize you're creating. And I'm not talking about happenstance and chance. Instead, when you're walking around the city, 
right, with your family, and you're just enjoying a vacation, this type of picture wouldn't have come out of my cell phone because I wouldn't have brought my cell phone out. I just, I didn't. But I had my camera strapped to my hand just so that I could take what would be snapshots, albeit properly composed snapshots, but at the time would be snapshots. But I did my work, I thought about it, and I let the camera help me. I set the camera the way I wanted it to, and I just was able to create these really nice images. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking for something special. And when I saw these after I got to the house and I, and I looked at them on Lightroom, and I saw these, and I was just amazed. I was really excited. Guys, I hope you are excited too. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments down below. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. You can find me on Facebook at Rob Ham, Robert Ham Photography. You can find me on YouTube at Robert Ham. You can find me over on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Ham Photo. And I want to wish you thank you for watching. And as always, keep shooting, my friends.